yeah, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. I'm just extremely hot and thirsty. Cheers. So if you've been watching my content for the past year or two, you'd know that I shoot music videos alongside taking photos and also shooting corporate videos and videos for myself. And I've started taking this music video journey a bit more serious over the past few months. Since this year, I've crossed my milestone of shooting 10 official music videos since I've started in 2019. And in this video, I want to walk you guys through what I've learned up to shooting these 10 music videos. Let's get into this video, Siobhan Beckford style. I can't put my hand over the lens because I now have a filter in front of my lens and if I put my hand there, it will get smudged. So let's go. <laughs> So what I have learned, firstly, you're not going to start landing those big artists, those big projects right off the bat, right from the get go. It doesn't matter the equipment you have. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how clean your videos are. It doesn't matter how sick your edits are. You're not going to start landing those big artists, those big projects right off the bat. If no one knows you, if no one has seen any work that you've done, there can be a music video producer out there whose content don't look how you would make your content look. I'm just saying their content don't look as good as yours, but they're getting more gigs than you. This is because they have taken the time out to build a network, to build a legacy, to build a name, a reputation within the industry. So people are more likely to trust them to get the work done opposing to risk taking you on board and they haven't seen anything from you so far. So a thing to work with when you're just starting out as a music video producer is to work with your friends, start doing some projects for free, start experimenting, start doing some community service as we call it here in Jamaica. Whenever we do something for free, we call it community service because we're not earning from it. So go out there, you have to have at least one friend that's an artist, one friend that's involved in music, dancing, or they're a DJ and want to create some form of music video or something to promote some form of musical art they want to produce and promote. Start off with some free work, get the project rolling, edit, post, and show people what you have to offer as a music video producer. The next step is to upgrade your gears as you go along. Yeah, a lot of creators out there will say gear doesn't matter. But that same creator that is telling you that gear doesn't matter is boasting with their Canon EOS R5, their Sony A7R5, their Sony A7 IV, and so on and so forth with those nice G Master lens, Canon Pro lens and whatever. And they're the ones telling you that gear doesn't matter. Well, gear matters to a point. When you reach a certain level within the hierarchy or when you reach a certain level within your skill set and the clients you're getting, your gear will actually start to matter. And at this point, it is good for you to upgrade your gears slowly. I'm not telling you to go out there and buy the latest this and the latest that, but do it slowly. You used to shoot on your smartphone because that's where I started from. I started shooting music videos on my smartphone and then I upgrade to a video camera. I got the Panasonic Lumix G7. That was my first mirrorless camera and it was amazing. It was the first 4K camera I had back then in 2020 and I got three lens for it. I got the 14 to 45, the 24 millimeter prime or 25, I'm not sure, and the 105 
prime lens and I used those three lens to create some nice music videos back then and work my way up the ladder. I also had a drone so I was offering service that not many video producers in Jamaica back then were offering because drone was relatively new to Jamaica back in 2018-2019 and I had the Mavic Air and so I had drone videos to incorporate into my music video projects even when I was shooting with the smartphone because I had my drone since then and then I upgraded to my camera. I then upgraded from my Lumix G7 to the Lumix S5 and that expanded my quality even further. Now after getting the Lumix S5, I also upgraded to the DJI Air 2S to also expand my aerial coverage quality to make my music videos even more premium than what I was offering before. Now after getting these gears, I noticed that my videos only had day scenes. I didn't have proper equipment to execute proper night scenes. So I started investing in lights. Yes, you should invest in lights. Lights can help you to tell a better story, to light your scenes properly, to make your videos pop, to give your videos a ton of effects opposed to not having lights or if you were shooting during the daytime. Incorporating night and day scenes can help you to tell a better story and also make your videos not the average video that you see out there with someone just picking up a camera, capturing and editing. The next thing I went on to do was to learn and master color grade. I still haven't mastered color grade as yet but I'm trying to get there. I've been doing some courses, watching a ton of videos, doing some research and trying some stuff out for myself. Started using LUTs to make my video workflow more smooth and not as tedious as it would if I was to sit down and color grade all those clips from scratch. Yeah, trust me. LUTs will make your color grading workflow way smoother, takes less time, and your videos will look more uniform. The next thing I went on to do was to invest in assets like VFX, transition packs, overlays, sound effects, and all those good stuff because you know music videos use a lot of overlays and stock assets to make the videos look attractive and so the frames don't look drawn out and repetitive. You can add a bunch of overlays to make your videos appealing to the eye so the viewer don't get bored and to grab the attention of whoever is viewing your videos. So invest in stock assets, get some lots, practice color grading and improving on your lighting. Another issue that was holding me down was having my work in one place where I could package samples of my work and send off to potential clients so they can view what my work look like in the event they are inquiring to book me for a project. So invest in a portfolio. If the projects you've worked on are posted on YouTube, I am sure um, websites such as Wix, Squarespace, if you're using Adobe Portfolio, you can embed the YouTube videos onto those websites. So you don't necessarily have to upload the video directly to the website or your portfolio. You can embed a link from the YouTube video onto wherever you're hosting your portfolio. So you can send a link of the portfolio or your website to the client so they can see everything in one place. And the final thing I've learned since I've completed these YouTube projects is that you can't depend on people to find you to give work to you. You have to position yourself in a position or place for you to be pushed into the eyes of potential customers, potential artists, producers, so on and so forth. Post on your social media regular, create promotional content for the artist such as 
small snippets of the music video to be posted on Instagram. You know, the Instagram audience, if they share your stuff, that will be shared to their audience. They might have an art artist friend, sees the work and want to book you as well. So try to work on your social presence so you can do some more sharing and networking on social media and don't depend on people coming towards you for work. Also, try to diversify your portfolio. If you're in the music industry and you're making music videos, try to make lyric videos and audio visuals as well. It's not as hard as you think it is. Just try to learn After Effects, do some motion animation, some visualizers for the artists so they can promote the song until the music video project is ready. This is also a good way to sharpen on your animation skills. So over time, you can probably start offering premium lyrics video, like what I'm doing currently, opposed to only producing music videos. Because you know, a lot of artists would want to post the lyric video. In the meantime, while the full music video is being worked on so they can keep the traction going for the track. And lyric videos also gives the audience a reason to continue watching the video while they listen to the music so they can learn the lyrics. So when the actual video comes out, they know the song, they can share the song, and they were already anticipating what the actual video would look like for the song. So those are just a few of the stuff I've learned since I've started shooting music videos. I've crossed around 10 music videos now. I want to do 20 before the year ends, even though <laughs> if I started in 2019 and it's now 2023 and I've just done 10 professional music videos, doing 20 by the end of this year is going to take a lot of work, but I can do it. And also try to network yourself with the talent so you can get talents for the artists for their music videos, venues, props, you can get a car, a studio to rent, network yourself. So whenever you have a project to execute, you can call up the right persons and get it done. I'm Siobhan Beckford and I do hope you found some value in this video. If you want to see more videos of me talking about how to shoot music videos, how to edit music videos or anything related to music videos and video production, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the like button so algorithm can like me and go check me out on Instagram. And that's it. Signing out. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.